During the 2021 NBA playoffs, the Atlanta Hawks, led by a 22-year-old Trey Young, competing in his first ever postseason, made a run that nobody could have expected. Young managed averages of 28 points and 9 assists per game as Atlanta took down the New York Knicks in a dramatic and very contentious round one, then knocked off the title favorite Philadelphia 76ers in round two. Throughout that series in particular, the Hawks were able to get in the head of and derail the perennial all-star career of Ben Simmons in such a way that we have never seen before. The Hawks even pushed the conference finals to six games before falling to the eventual champion Milwaukee Bucks, who were led by the two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. Atlanta did it all while being led by a core of guys only in their early to mid-20s meaning that their future was very bright and the rest of the league was taking notice. Unfortunately for the Hawks, 2022 was not nearly as storybook of a year as the year prior. The Hawks finished the season as the ninth seed in the East, but did manage to take down both Charlotte and Cleveland to squeak into the playoffs. However, they would fall in round one to the Miami Heat in only five games. During that summer, the front office of Atlanta decided to make a win-now trade that many applauded at the time as they acquired the 25-year-old all-star and all-NBA defensive team member DeJounte Murray in exchange for Danilo Gallinari and multiple first-round picks. This was a move Atlanta hoped would push them over the hump and get them into the upper echelon of the Eastern Conference. Murray was a product of the San Antonio Spurs system. He had shown elite perimeter defensive abilities leading the entire NBA in steals per game that season at two while also being a spectacular floor general managing nine assists a night. Murray was also a very good rim attacker, being far more gifted physically than Trey Young in size, speed, and athleticism. The goal was for Murray to take about half the point guard duties from Young in an attempt to capitalize on his stellar three-point shooting. In 2022, Young managed a 38% three-point shot on eight attempts per game. If the team could help him get easier looks in alleviate some of his defensive stresses, they hoped that would lead to an even better and more prolific three-point shooting. For several reasons, especially outside of Young and Murray's control, this dream pairing did not result in the success Atlanta had hoped for over this past year and a half. In 2023, Atlanta again lost in the first round after surviving the play-in. Trey Young's long-range shooting fell down to below league average during that year, and now it still sits at only 35% in 2024. The team's defense also has failed to make the strides the front office had hoped it would. Their relative defensive rating, that being their defensive rating compared to the league average, is still really high. In fact, in 2024, their relative defensive rating of 4.5 is the worst the franchise has had since 2006, back in a year where the team only won 26 games. Because of these reasons, many feel as though DeJounte Murray is a well-deserved name on this year's trade block because it hasn't worked out after they brought him on. But breaking down the numbers, Murray is only 27 years old, meaning he is still in his prime. He is also on a long-term deal, but only making 18 million this season. This season with Atlanta, he is averaging 21 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, and 1.4 steals per game while shooting a career best from deep hitting 38% of his six tries a night. He is also finishing well inside the arc, making a career-high 51% of his twos. Murray also has not been an injury liability for Atlanta, as he rarely ever misses a game. So now that I say all that out loud, it makes me wonder why Atlanta feels Murray needs to go at all, honestly, as the issue for the team really lies in their lackluster forward and center spots. But I suppose in order to make upgrades there, they need to be willing to sacrifice their second point guard. Trey Young does not seem likely to get moved after all. Currently, the Hawks' biggest weaknesses are defense, shooting accuracy both inside and out, and defensive rebounding. Those are the things I am looking for with these trades. Now, before we actually get into my ideas, if you have made it this far, please like the video as it helps me out much more than I think you guys realize. Now, let us dive into five possible DeJounte Murray trades. First things first, we have to talk about the trade mainstream media is dying to see. ESPN wants nothing more than the LA Lakers to be a contending team, and right now, 
they sit barely in the plan. For my first trade, I have Murray going to LA in exchange for Austin Reeves, Christian Wood, and a future first round pick. For the Lakers, Murray gives them a point guard they can count on when it comes to orchestrating the offense, shooting, and perimeter defense. Now, by the way, I recognize that there has been a lot of criticism of Murray's defense this year. However, I feel as though this has been a bit overblown by mainstream media, and a change of scenery could be all it takes to bring back his defense to what we know it can be. While in the heavy disciplined San Antonio Spurs system, Murray was elite defensively. We know he can do it and hopefully playing with win now veterans like LeBron James and Anthony Davis, that will bring back that part of his game. The Lakers starting five has been all over the place in 2024 as guys like D'Angelo Russell and Reeves have both been lacking in crucial elements of their game that Murray provides. I think this deal would be a major boost to LA, but for Atlanta, you cannot argue Reeves is unquestionably a step down for Murray in pretty much every way, but he still does a lot of the same things Murray does and he earns less money. For what it is worth, Reeves though has been a better team defender in 2024, so perhaps that will rub off on his Atlanta teammates and their overall defense will get a little bit better. Plus the addition of Wood boosts Atlanta's big man scoring considerably as currently Clint Capella and Onyeka Okongwu, though talented rim protectors and rebounders, are absolute zeros as threats anywhere outside of three feet from the basket. Wood could play the four next to these two, which would boost their scoring and sure up their rebounding. I'll admit that I do not love this deal for Atlanta, but if they decide they must make a move, this is not a terrible option. The next deal I have come up with has Murray going to the Brooklyn Nets in exchange for Michael Bridges. This deal may seem a bit out of left field, but allow me to explain. Brooklyn opened this season pretty good, but has gone on a legendary downward spiral since mid-December, as they have lost 14 of their last 17 games, and things aren't looking up anytime soon. This trade would be a deal to shore up their future. Their current starting point guard is the 30-year-old Spencer Dinwiddie, but he will be a free agent this upcoming summer, meaning the team will need a long-term replacement. Ben Simmons obviously is not going to be that future replacement, so hopefully Murray can take over this role as the team retools and prepares for a brighter tomorrow, led by Murray alongside Cameron Johnson and Nick Claxton. That trio of players is a very good starting point for any team. I know cap space is not what it used to be, but Brooklyn is set to have a lot of it this upcoming summer. There are ways to make this team viable, and having a borderline all-star caliber point guard, an elite scoring shooter on the wing, and a very good rim protector as a foundation is something any team would want. For Atlanta, this deal is a match made in heaven. Bridges may be having a bit of a down year, but that is largely due to the extreme load being put on his back every single night. Bridges is a very good shooter, but he's a better rim attacker and an elite defensive player capable of matching up one through five. Literally every team in the league would want to have Bridges playing for them. Trey Young's life would be made so much easier being able to actually count on a forward night in and night out, which he has not been able to do since John Collins was playing like a star four years ago. I love this deal both ways and I really want to see it happen. Up next, we have Murray going to a team that is also all over the internet in trade rumors, the Chicago Bulls, in exchange for Alex Caruso, Andre Drummond, and at least one first round pick. The Bulls, like the Hawks, are a team whose front office is trying to go all in, but they have failed to make much of a dent in the Eastern Conference this year. They currently sit under 500 and are barely in the play-in. This deal for Murray would likely not be the only move Chicago makes, as Zach Levine almost certainly will also be on the move. Murray gives the Bulls defense around the perimeter they have been missing, as none of Levine, DeMar DeRozan, or Kobe White are impactful at that end of the floor. He also elevates their passing, as hopefully the team's offensive scheme can get a lift with such an athletic and capable floor general leading the charge every time down the floor. I think Murray is the exact type of player Chicago needs to push them up in the standings. For Atlanta, neither Caruso or Drummond are as good as Murray, 
Nobody's arguing that, but both bring to the table things that the team desperately needs. Caruso is a comparable perimeter defender, but undoubtedly a more versatile one as he often matches up with forwards and does a very good job doing so. He can also hit the long ball at an above 40% rate, which is heavily desired. Though he won't create a lot of looks for himself like off the dribble, playing alongside Young and Bogdan Bogdanovich will hopefully help him get plenty of open looks. Drummond, meanwhile, is a rebounding machine unlike any other. This year, he is grabbing 26 rebounds per 100 possessions, a full five rebounds more than second place. That means every single possession, there's a 26% chance it's gonna end with a Drummond rebound, which is just crazy. The Hawks' center rotation doesn't necessarily become more offensively gifted, but eliminating second opportunities for the opponent while giving your team as many as possible is always a good thing. I see this deal benefiting both sides. For my fourth deal, I have DeJounte Murray heading to the New Orleans Pelicans in exchange for Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado, and at least one first round pick. The Pelicans are on the brink of contending in the brutal Western Conference. This season has been one of the rare healthy ones for both Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, so the franchise needs to capitalize on it. Murray would give them a more reliable floor general that they simply have been lacking. CJ McCollum is best suited to be a scoring guard. Murray's addition would enable him to play the role he is best at. Sure, defensively, Jones and Alvarado are going to be missed, but I feel as though the team plays good enough team defense to make up for their absence, and Murray brings defensive potential of his own. For Atlanta, Jones is a dream wing to have alongside Young. His defensive ability is about as good as it gets in the entire NBA. He would without a doubt raise this team's ceiling on that end of the floor. Plus, an underrated aspect of his game is his outside shooting. This year, he's hitting 38% of his threes. And Alvarado gives them a reliable backup point guard. He is a talented defender, good floor general, and he is also shooting the outside ball well at 39%. He, alongside Bogdanovich in the second unit, would be terrific to watch. I have not seen New Orleans brought up in many trade discussions, but to me, this makes a lot of sense. And for my final trade idea, we have Murray going back to where it all started. He is sent back to the San Antonio Spurs in exchange for Doug McDermott, Chetty Osman, and two future first round picks. We have all already seen what Murray can do in San Antonio, orchestrating a lackluster team further than anyone thought they had any business going. The Spurs opted to move on from Murray to improve their odds in landing Victor Wembanyama, and it actually worked. Now they have the number one under 21 prospect in all of basketball on their team, but they find themselves without a dependable starting caliber point guard. This is a match made in heaven. Murray would make Wembanyama's life so much easier, as well as help free up and create looks for the team's other young, talented players, Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, and Zach Collins. This team would instantly climb out of the cellar of the West and may even flirt with being a play-in team by the end of the year. And long term, Murray is locked down through 2027, meaning he and Wemby have plenty of time to further develop chemistry and get better alongside each other. This deal would make Spur fans very happy. But for the Hawks, admittedly, this is a bit of a lackluster trade package. McDermott is a very good shooter, in the same vein of like a Kyle Korver type, meaning he's going to check into the game, hit a couple threes, and that's about it. And Osman is a more versatile wing scorer than most, but he's not that good still. And the picks might be useful, as the Spurs likely won't make the playoffs this year. Therefore, any pick in the lottery could be potentially very valuable this year, as this year's draft class doesn't have any clear 1 through 10. Like everyone, it seems like every month is being rearranged. Honestly, I don't like this trade package. Maybe Atlanta could convince the Spurs to give up someone like Sohan, other than Osman. But then again, I'm not really sure the Hawks want a 20-year-old project. I think they want guys who can help them win. So, for all those reasons, I, I don't like this trade idea. But I'll be honest, when I was sitting down and putting this video together, it was actually a lot harder to come up with five good trades that made sense. DeJounte Murray isn't making a lot of money, but he's just a very, he's a very specific type of player that isn't easy to plug and play. He's a starting point guard. Most good teams don't need a starting point guard. And the ones who do, like the Phoenix Suns, for example, 
they don't really have the room to make it work financially. They'd have to give up too much. And then teams like Charlotte, maybe, who are just bad and are willing to get into any trade with anybody, they don't really have anything either. So it's tough to come up with trade ideas. If you have any ideas, please leave them as a comment down below. I do read every comment. I don't get a lot of comments, so obviously I read every comment and I reply to every single one that you know is worth replying to. If you actually say something that is worth a discussion, I'm always eager to get into a discussion. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe for more future basketball content. I will see you all next time.